Hi there, listener. You're about to experience Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games, and there will be plenty of game talk, but also copious amounts of crude, off-color, offensive, and immature speech. So if you are of a rather sensitive humor constitution, we're just letting you know what you're in for with this show. It has games. It has jokes. You know, just games and jokes. Take the games, take the jokes, and have a good time. Hello, Internet, and welcome to another Tadpog podcast, Original Flavor Wednesday. I like that. We need a really reverb effect. <laughs> and today, yeah. we're going to be talking about IGN's 34th ranked game, Lufia 2. Colon. I said that slightly out of order, didn't I? Lufia 2, The Rise of the Sinistrals. You said it out of order? Well, we're <laughs> who are we? We're two old guys talking about old games. You want to start over or you just want to go with no, it? No, we're rolling, we're rolling, we're rolling with, it. with it. Okay. We're rolling with it. We'll see how many people went, wait a minute, something... Oh, okay. okay. I mean, we, get, we got... Clearly, the frogs in Tadpog <laughs> Pond are just croaking away, <laughs> so we might as well just go off the cuff today. It, it's true. It's true. It's good. I'm your bearded host, Tyler. Hi, Tyler. And... I thought we were going to have Josh Nance of Uniracer Fame with us today. But I did too. I'm looking at an empty chair and I'm kind of <laughs> sad, man. I'm, I'm, I'm sad, sad too. Because the story I have today is about uh, something him and I did. Uh, something something we started together. A murder plot. <laughs> <laughs> well, we both got very into the to the Brad Pitt classic Fight Club. Did you now? So, <laughs> I did not know this about yeah. you too. Josh and I really enjoyed Fight Club. Mm-hmm. So when you really enjoy Fight Club, what do you think about doing? You definitely, even if you're like remotely into Fight Club, you think about starting your own Fight Club. You are so right. <laughs> so Josh and I are. <laughs> yeah, I knew you'd like this. I never heard this story. Josh and I are. Senior year of high school. Oh no! Decided to start. Oh no! We decided to start our own fight club. Oh no! So uh, in we, Marshall County. Yeah, in, in Josh's garage. You know, you're breaking the first rule of Marshall County Fight Club. Uh, that fight club that, that <laughs> died very quickly. That a very quick death. It, it, yeah, like the kid, like the first kid who died. <laughs> <laughs> well, like we um, we started talking to some friends about it. We yeah. probably got about <laughs> you were already breaking the rule. <laughs> <laughs> we got anywhere from like six to eight people on board. Yeah, that's that's pretty impressive. Well, so what we spun it though, because of course we're pussies. We're total pussies. So uh, it was our, it was like our fight boxing club. <laughs> so we would wear boxing gloves. <laughs> <laughs> so we wait until one night when Josh's parents are out of town for the weekend. Uh huh. And we call yeah. up all our bros and we get our <laughs> boxing gloves and we have our own little fight club in in Josh's Josh's garage. In Josh's garage. We pull all the all the well Josh's garage. It's it's funny. Um, it was a recent addition to his house, so it still had all. It still smelled of fresh lumber. <laughs> uh, it had the closet full of his mom's romantic. Uh, novels in it. Oh my! Oh, she loves. Uh, what's the name? What's the famous that does all the romance novels? I I have no idea. But she had. She has like. I don't read them. She, I, I swear I don't, Tyler. <laughs> I don't read them. <laughs> Meg does. Meg's two four six loves that shit. She knows um, the answer. She she's, does. She's right outside Tadpog <laughs> Annex. I'm sure it'll it'll come to me like in like 30, 45 minutes. Great. It'll be, in, it'll be a wonderful callback. In the middle of Lufia too. I'll be like, oh yeah. Blah, blah. <laughs> But she has she has a she had a closet built specifically in their garage for this. She has like at least like five hundred of these damn books. I imagine it closet. like in a nice like liquor cabinet almost. <laughs> like a, there's a there's a lock and key involved. <laughs> Harlequin Harlequin romance novels. Oh, I thought you were looking for like an Arthur an Arthur <laughs> <laughs> an Arthur, Arthur Miller. She's very an Arthur Miller. <laughs> An author, <laughs> as you call him outside of Kentucky. Man, he's an author. He's that an book. Arthur. You know, I picked it up at the library. <laughs> <laughs> but she, so it was closet full of Harlequin romance novels, wood shop. They had a lot of tennis rackets for some reason. Never seen any of them play tennis. But <laughs> so we pulled the garage out, we pushed like the woodworking equipment to the side, had our fight club, our boxing fight club. I remember, uh, one of Josh's, uh, I had only hung with the kid a few times. He was Josh's 
friend that his mom would make him like if I was busy, yeah. his mom would make him call this kid to come spend the night on like weekends because she felt like bad for him. Like you need to hang out with this kid, so he was there. We got sympathy, him sympathy friend, <laughs> sympathy friend. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think he and Josh Box. Let's get sympathy uh, sympathy friend. Come on, guest host Luffy too. He probably could. I'm sure he could. <laughs> but I here's the thing about me. Like I I feel like I, I'm I'm a tough guy. I feel like I can take a hit. Mm-hmm. But I have tiny T Rex arms. I do. I, I I have I have short arms. If Meg and I stand chest to chest, her mm-hmm. wingspan is at least like six eight inches longer than mine. I never like, noticed that about she you. Has, she has freakish monkey arms, and I have tiny T-Rex arms. So our baby will be blessed with perfectly average human arms. Maybe. Have you done the, have you done the chai square to figure out? Can I have <laughs> Short arms, are they recessive or dominant? <laughs> <laughs> well, in my family, they're very, they're very dominant. Whole family of T-Rex <laughs> arms. But in boxing, reach is damn important. It's really important. In so I yes. fight the kid... Um, the the guy was like six two, huge. I mean, his reach like there's no way I'm getting anywhere close to him. So we start we start boxing, and I'm doing everything I can. Like I'm quicker than he is, but you can just see on the inside of his arms, like around his biceps, are just red because that's the closest I can get to him to punch him. So I'm just punching his biceps. Just punching his, well, hey, maybe eventually you're gonna make him tired. <laughs> he won't be able to lift his arms up. I like, well, I, I like what you're thinking. <laughs> so I can't, you know, I'm trying to dodge his incredibly long punches, you know, getting in on the inside, only getting to his biceps. And eventually I get frustrated and like, that's it. And I go in, I go in for a haymaker and oh man, he fucking hit me like a Mack truck. Like it was, it had to be comical. So what, you just, went in and just left I went, yourself complete, completely open, I went, right? I was just, yeah, I was frustrated. I went in for the haymaker and he just wham. And I remember... I, Where'd he hit you? In the face. <laughs> just straight, I mean, we were boxing, boxing, yeah. just bam. Well, I mean, it could have been a body shot, or I mean... And it was, I remember everybody, I remember hearing everybody go, oh, because it was, I felt it, whoomp, everything like went white, and I remember I span around like fucking punch out, like <laughs> someone getting the knockout and the mouth guard go flying. Well, he saw your star. He yeah. saw your star <laughs> pop up when you went back for that haymaker. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, fucking laid me out. And I believe that was the end of our fight club. I was about club. to say, and then fight club was fight over. Fight club, no more. <laughs> Turn, turned into a party where we drank Zimas. <laughs> <laughs> you know how most fight clubs end. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure that's spoilers. It's in the movie. That's that, how the movie ended. <laughs> in that basement at the bar, they're all just drinking Zimas. <laughs> they were like, man, that was kind of dumb, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Let's just drink Zimas and play Game Boy. Tell all him right. beats the shit out of Angel Face to everybody just slowly <laughs> sipping on Zimas. Like, hey, stop it. He's down. <laughs> What's up, Internet? I am Dave, the other half of Tadpog. I am your bespectacled host. And I was trying to think of a good Josh story. It's exclusive to me, and I really can't think of any. Um, sorry, Josh. I thought we were close, man, but I, I guess we're not. Mm. I, clearly, we're not. If you're not <laughs> recording Luffy two with us, I don't know. Um, do you, Tyler, do you know what the score is between Josh and Nicole on number of episodes? I guess it's pretty or? close. I think Josh is still ahead, but it's pretty close. So he's getting pretty comfortable. Mm-hmm. He's feeling pretty comfortable. Mm-hmm. It's like the tortoise and the hare. So we gotta start pulling her up for like obscure ones. No one's gonna think she's gonna guest host. What's the uh, what's the game that you like where it's the dating sim with all the <laughs> <laughs> all the disfigured girls? Uh, yeah, um, Katawa Shujo. Katawa Shujo. I've been kind of on the fence about oh, that because I don't really want to do that. But if we can convince Nicole to guest host with that <sighs> with us on that one, I'll do it. Man, I would love to watch her play Katawa Shujo. <laughs> <laughs> so I t- if you if you could sign her for that episode, then then I'm 100 percent in. Because last last week uh, she beat Gone Home and played a good chunk of Papers Please. So now I think it'll be like, all right, now you need to beat this <laughs> game. <laughs> we'll blow it up on, on my big screen and she can she can play it. <laughs> well, let me know when that happens. I'll come by and uh, I'll watch. That way I can talk about it too. <laughs> Um, it can't be too different from Skullgirls, right? No, it's pretty much the same. Pretty close. It's pretty much the same. <laughs> um, you know what? I don't have any good Josh stories other than I remember when I was moving from Murray from college to my first job in Paducah, uh, I couldn't have Ein, my dog. Mm-hmm. And I remember um, you and Meg watched him for a while when you were living with Josh. And then I remember um, Josh... 
taking him to his house, and much like Fight Club, I, I got to stay there one night. Oh man! Uh, because he didn't, because he was a very loud dog and liked to bark a lot. Mm-hmm. Yes, he was very vocal. He liked to talk <laughs> and let people know how they feel. So that's what he did at Josh's house all night. And uh, the very next day, Josh told me. Uh, my dad says that I can't stay here anymore. <laughs> so that's when Jacob took him mm-hmm. and became Ayn's uh, godfather. Mm-hmm. Remember, Josh had Josh's dog. He had a large black lab named Shaq. I did not know this. <laughs> this is great information to have. Um, I, he can't even tell me why they named the dog Shaq. Like, oh, we but, all know why he named the dog Shaq. Well, they don't like basketball. They don't like. I mean, I could. Uh, who named him? Josh is kind of shrugs. <laughs> I mean, he just, he just entered them? their lives as Shaq. <laughs> Maybe Shaquille O'Neal gave them the dog. <laughs> <laughs> he just drove up and just tossed it out. What team did he play he for? He was like me. he was Magic. That's who. That's who drafted him. Yes. Okay. Magic. So I just imagined that Orlando Magic's tour bus just <laughs> just pulled in to Marshall County and they just dropped the dog off. <laughs> Like I'm at this this wonderfully comic scene where they're all trying to get to the next game, and Shaquille O'Neal's dog is just running <laughs> havoc on the bus, just peeing on things, eating dudes' pizzas, <laughs> and the coach is like, "Shaquille, we're pulling this bus aside, and you're gonna give this dog to the first boy you see." That, so that's the version of Beethoven I want to see. <laughs> it's called Shaquille, and it's just a crazy black lab eating pizzas. <laughs> But they, he had um, a large like pen in the back, and he had basically this setup that had just stayed there at Josh's house, and I believe is still there since since Shaq passed away. So yeah, they just threw Ayn in there, but that cage is in the middle of their huge backyard where there are all sorts of noises and people. So yeah, there was there was no <laughs> fight <way>. clubs. <laughs> yeah, we're just people having fight clubs in the garage. Why didn't you guys have the fight club in the dog den? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it's such a good idea. It would have been better. <laughs> Michael Vick's fight club. <laughs> you guys dress up like dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Lufia 2? Yeah, let's do Lufia 2. Um, like, I broke... Okay. Last episode, I said that I wasn't going to play Lufia 2. Mm-hmm. I broke that promise. I did play it, but for like five hours. I got like five hours into it. Okay. I feel like I didn't get as far as a normal human being would get into <laughs> Lufia 2 after playing it for five hours. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the first experience I've ever had with the game. Tyler, from what I understand, you played this game... As a kid, Josh and I played the hell out of this game as kids. Oh, so that's why we wanted Josh. On wanted oh, Josh because on he me. has a very deep and wide knowledge of this mm-hmm, game. Mm-hmm. In fact, that is one. Um, our friend MJ Lynx, his him, his impression of Josh often involves him talking about how much he wants to go home and just play Lufia. So it it is more. I played it more often, but it has been more quintessential to Josh than it has than it has to me. But do you think maybe that's why Josh didn't come on? Maybe it's too it's close too to much. him. It's too it's much. Too close. He couldn't talk about it. Because <laughs> I played Lufia 1 and Lufia 2. Lufia 2 bring, being the prequel game to the original Lufia. Yeah, that's an interesting choice. Um, do you know why they did that? I, uh, probably, I imagine just fans wanted it. Because the original Lufia, and this is one of my favorite, what they did is I, I absolutely love it. It was I remember just being so wowed by it as a kid. Because you turn on Lufia 1 and you start off basically at at the final battle as Maxim, Maxim, Slan, uh, Guy, and Artia. Or Artie, Artia. Uh, Josh and I would always say it. Yeah, the elf. Uh, you start off at the final battle where they're going to fight the Sinistrals. That's how Lufia 1 that's starts? That's how Lufia 1 starts. Oh, that's you're, cool. You're max level. In media maxim. res. <laughs> exactly. Nice. And you have all the in-game equipment. Uh, they're Maxim and Slan are husband and wife, and they're talking about things you don't you don't understand what at about that point. Tia? What happens with Tia? Cle- c- clearly nothing good. Oh, man. That's... Oh, <laughs> gosh. I need to finish this game. Yeah. I'm invested in Tia. Yep. She wanted Maxim's baby, Tyler. Real bad. Real bad. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. The plot thickens. So whenever you, you fight through what is in afterwards, not like a legendary fight that people just talk about and things like that, uh, in, so the, you, in the game, in the game, like later on, <laughs> like Lufia, just, just guys in genera- the generations hut. later, uh-huh. then you this they talk about this battle, so you get to play it at the beginning. Okay, and you play through, you beat the four sinistrals. Um, spoilers. I, mean, it, I can say spoilers, but it's the first five <laughs> minutes of the game. Um, We're well, just spoiling Lufia too. Yeah, <laughs> and basically, 
Uh, they kill the Sinistrals. The bridge collapses. Guy and Artia on one side, Maxim and Salan on the other, and uh, Salan only has enough magic to cast teleport once, mm-hmm. and she doesn't have the range to get all of them. So she sends Guy and Artia away, and you're on a floating island. So Maxim and Salan embrace each other, um, talking about how they wish they could have seen their child one more time. Floating island crashes and they die. At end of Do you the, see the bodies? You don't see the bodies. All no. right. Could no. be comic book death. That's true. Could be comic book death. Have you played have you played any of the other is there they came out with one for DS, right? They're Game Boy Color. Okay. I I have not played that one. Okay. But well, maybe maybe they're back. Ma- true. Maybe they're back. But then Lupia One, you end up then you are playing Maximus Slan's son and you go through uh, the Sinistrals come back, and that's how you play through as his son. So I guess they the, come back. Yep, yeah, they come back. Why? Why would they come back? They go through all that trouble <laughs> to defeat them, and then they just come back. I feel like somebody summons them back. Someone resurrects them. Man, and I, I someone's I imagine... always got. Oh, someone's always got to resurrect the Sinistrals. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Motherfuckers are always resurrect. I mean, you can't. You can't turn your back for a second. <laughs> well, somebody be like, animal, more, no, no, Sinistrals back. Boom. Mm. But um, so then I imagine the fans had to be like, we want this game. We want the game that we started in Lufia 1. So then Lufia 2 being, that's how Maxim, it's the tale of Maxim. And then Lufia 2 ends the same way Lufia 1 starts. You go into that battle. So you're, you already know what's going to happen. But so, you, so yes, you did play this game as a kid. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. I mean, it sounds like, I don't think, I don't think we've, this may be the first episode where I think you've talked so passionately where about gu- a game. Where I've gushed about a game. <laughs> yeah, no, I like it. I like it. everyone. Everyone who is a long term listener is going to hear this episode, and I, I don't know how they're going to take it. Matt, I've just turned Matt Barger's world upside down talking so positively about a game. Lord Matt, Lord Matt, right? Lord Matt. Yeah. And I say Lord Matt because I have flubbed in the last episode. I said Tony. I didn't give him his title. He earned. Oh, he earned he that did. title. He earned that. Impresario Tony. Mm-hmm. I sorry Tony. I done goofed. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say about this game. Um, I have Meg. Um, Meg has decided for the last so many years she's played through all of my favorite SNES games. As we're as Josh is doing with Nicole every week. Usually I go over there. They come to my place or whatever. When we play Super Nintendo games. But Meg, the last one she tried probably a year and a half ago was Lufia Two. We tried playing through it again. She got about halfway and playing through it again. But you know, in the recent present, mm-hmm. there there are definitely some flaws. Like like my nostalgia glasses were off playing back through it again. Okay, well that's interesting. I, I want to get into that because spoilers. I was pleasantly surprised with what I played. Um, the the five hours that I put into the game, uh, I felt like that was sufficient to get an idea of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just one of those things where it's. If I haven't played an RPG before, it's really hard for me to finish an RPG in a week. Yeah, you don't want to. Yeah, you have, <laughs> then you have to like spend all your time on it. And you're rushing through it. You're not getting a good sense of it if you're just trying to finish it. And that's like that's how it was with the Super Mario RPG for me. Is I rented it at Blockbuster and I was gonna ha- come ha- hell or high water. I was finishing that game before it had to go <laughs> back to Blockbuster on Monday. So it was one of those things where I just I beat that game. Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday, and it's like I. It was a miserable That's experience, crazy, man. Yeah, because I remember I had I rented Final Fantasy three so many times because I'd play it, I get pretty far, have to return it. Oh, someone would erase your save. Somebody erase your I mean, save. Come on. Always, you never get that save back. So. That's like the equivalent of online griefing. I, <laughs> back in the nineties, where it's like yeah. you'd rent a game if you were going to be a dick. What's the first thing you did? Erase every save slot on the cartridge, <laughs> and then re- and then replace it with your save file and name all the characters just stupid shit. <laughs> oh, that'd make me so mad when I get that copy of Final, Final Fantasy three back. Yeah, and everyone's named like shithead, poo poo face. It's just like, <laughs> oh, these fucking people. <laughs> Have they no respect for the uh, sanctity <laughs> of Final Fantasy? <laughs> I mean, Meg and I got into it enough when she named Cyan mm. Selleck because she's like, he looks like Tom Selleck. It's like, but he's Cyan. Yeah, that. She named everybody else regular names that, except for Cyan. That rift never healed, did it? Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> no, no. Well, Tyler. Hey, I guess we should just flesh out a little more about Lupia, too. I've got a little segment that I like to do. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I, don't hear, I don't hear Trainsy. But but I do hear 
I do hear the frogs outside. <laughs> I hope, hopefully the mics are picking them up. Mm-hmm. Um, they're very loud. They're very into their mating ritual right now, <laughs> which means that we're, we're soon going to be blessed with a pool full of tadpoles. <laughs> <laughs> They can be the Tadpog Tadpoles. <laughs> that is the true Tadpog Nation. Yes, yes. <laughs> In your fuck pond. <laughs> In my it. fuck pond. <laughs> yes. <laughs> then um, that's actually where Come Blind Fuck Slave originated. That's, <laughs> they're not a garage band. They're a fuck pond they're band. They're a fuck pond band. <laughs> <laughs> they're acoustic because the electrical would just... Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You get it. <laughs> okay, guys. Lufia 2 colon Rise of the Sinistrals. Now, that is a term I'm not familiar with, sinistral. That's a new one on me. Um, it is known as Espolis Dinke II, hmm. which is officially translates to Biography of Estpolis II. Do you know <laughs> Do you know what that's all about, Tyler? Nope. Okay. And not at all. You're the, you're the resident Lufia II expert. <laughs> if you're stumped, then I certainly am. Um, that's what it's known as in Japan, Tyler. Um, and it's known... I guess they called Maxim S. Paulus then. That would make sense. Maybe. If it's, it's his autobiography. It's his story. Well, it's his biography. Yeah. But it's S. Paulus too. So that means there must have been an S. Paulus <laughs> one. Another one. one. <laughs> um, it's simply known as Lufia in Europe and Australia, which leads me to believe that maybe they didn't get Lufia in Europe and Australia. Mm, maybe they just okay. got Lufia too. Um, it's a role-playing video game with puzzle elements. Developed by Neverland and published in Japan in 1995 by Taito. Um, and in North America and Europe, it was published by Natsume. Um, we know a little bit about Natsume mm-hmm. um, from what, Paki and Rocky mm-hmm. and Harvest Moon? Yeah. Um, this game, we may have covered this a little bit. This game is a prequel to Lufia and the Fortress of Doom. Mm-hmm. Is that really what that game is called? Yep. It is. Is the fortress above or below the temple? I think the island is called the Fortress of Doom, the floating island. Okay. So it has nothing to do with Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Mm-mm. Okay. Nope. All right. Um, I was hoping there was a cool little tie-in because if there <laughs> you was... You see him running by right. at one point. <laughs> this belongs in a museum. <laughs> it follows the story of the first main character's ancestor, Maxim, and explains the origins of the war between mankind and a group of gods called the Sinistrals. Mm-hmm. Lufia 2 made a number of changes from the first game. Dungeons no longer have random encounters, and there are hundreds of puzzles throughout the game, ranging from simple to, they say, according to Wikipedia, extremely challenging. There are two that are extremely challenging. It also introduced new skills, such as a variety of weapons that could be used to stun monsters or solve puzzles, and IP attacks. Uh, in 2009, Square Enix announced a reimagining of the original game titled Lufia, colon, Curse of the Sinistrals. Mm -hmm. I played that as well. Um, They're saying that's a DS game. It is. Okay. But it is not one I enjoyed. I got about three hours into it and like... "Mm -mm." Really? Yeah. They reimagined it as an action RPG and I I did not enjoy it. Well, this Lufia 2 has some action RPG elements to it, I think, in the puzzle solving. Yeah. Because it reminded me, of that part, the puzzle solving reminded me a little bit of Zelda games. Because you're using these tools, like I know I had an arrow that I could use to shoot switches to raise and lower water levels mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then I know I picked up a bomb that I could use to explode uh, columns or uh, small cracks in a wall, stuff like that. That kind of stuff reminded me of Zelda. There's like an arrow, you get the arrow, flaming arrow... Uh, you eventually get a hook shot, the bomb. Really? Uh, I know there's more, but I can't think off the top of my head. Um, but it's very. It's also like it, uh, if any of the listeners um, from more more familiar with like what the Wild Arms series, they do that in Wild Arms as well. Like what each, the puzzle solving. Each character has a different tool or different set of tools to solve puzzles to get through the game. Like uh, in Wild Arms, Jack the cowboy has a mouse, so. The mouse will crawl through cracks and hit switches for you, and you switch back to your other character who has a gun and can shoot targets and things like that and progress through. Cool. But this this was the first game that I experienced that kind of gameplay in. Are there puzzles? I only experience puzzles in dungeons. Are there any puzzles outside of the dungeons? Don't just in dungeons. And I've also noticed the ones that I went through. Um, there were some puzzles that were 
integral to getting through the dungeon. Mm -hmm. And then there were some puzzles that were just kind of extra. And it felt like whenever I would solve one of the extra puzzles, I would usually get a pretty cool item. Mm -hmm. Um, Does that continue throughout the whole game? It does. Okay, cool. Because I... Because this... While... Here, I'll go ahead and get my my griefs about it out of the way. Okay. Since, since I've gushed, got the gushings, let's do some griefings. Okay. Uh, I feel like the magic system is a little strange in that they're just, you'd never exactly know what's going to be a good spell and a bad spell because they're not named in a progressive way. No. Ex- except for the heal spells. Well, not really. Uh, I would argue that I thought one of the healing spells was named uh, very wrong. Uh, the spell, okay. I'm going to test your Lufia 2 knowledge. Okay. Ready? What is a spell you cast to cure yourself of poison? Strong? No. No, strong is curing. Strong is what you cast to cure yourself. The spell that you cast to cure yourself of poison is called poison. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would think, based on every RPG I've ever played, <laughs> that poison would poison a monster, not cure your poison. Well, yeah, t- Two negatives equal positive. So, <laughs> well, that is true. I, I did. I did forget the laws of alchemy. <laughs> but and then, like strong, stronger, and champion are the healing spells. But then you don't know between like fry, zap, thunder. Like you know, and then different characters. The magic between the characters is different. So like, oh, I didn't know that. Like Slam will have a lot of spells that like Tia doesn't have. Artia will have spells that Slam doesn't have. Well, it's kind of. I noticed that when I was buying magic, because that's another thing about the magic system that I thought was, uh, I was okay with, but it was a little irritating is that you have to buy all your magic, mm-hmm. and and usually in an RPG when you buy magic, it's kind of shared for the party. Um, but you have to buy them for individual characters mm-hmm. in this game. And I did notice exactly what you're saying is when you're in the shop. And I'm going through spells. Um, Some of the spells I couldn't equip on certain characters, Mm -hmm. like Spark, for instance, which Mm -hmm. is a fire spell. Sounds like it would be a a lightning spell. Um, But regardless, Maxim can't equip it, Mm -hmm. but Tia could. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way. I remember there's another, like, a set of water spells that I think, like, only one character can use. And it's, and there are no, like, hidden spells that are stronger anywhere else. Like oh really? The game. Like so it's you o- just you only buy them from shops. You only get them from shops as you progress through the game. So there's not like a cool spell you eventually find. You just hit the last city, buy your last spells, and that's what you have for the game. That does seem a little weird for a game that has a lot of puzzles in it and a lot of rewards mm-hmm. for those puzzles. You would think that it would be nice if there was like an ultimate spell or something. So like that. So I enjoy physical attacks a lot more in this game than I do than I do the magic. In the in the Lufia Fight Club, yeah. And the, <laughs> uh, the music, I feel like the music was good, but there are there are hardly any tracks. Like the same music you hear in the first dungeon is pretty much what you hear in that type of dungeon for the rest of the game. That's a shame because I I like the music, but I didn't like I said I only got about five hours in. So if if I got to like hour thirty and I'm hearing the same song that I heard in the first dungeon, mm-hmm. I'm probably going to be annoyed. All the towns have the same music, the castle has the same music, and the dungeon has the same music. It's pretty much rinse and repeat. Those like three or you know maybe out in the field it's a little different, like three or four different tracks throughout the whole game until you get to the to the end. But- and then the Fortress of Doom has has a different theme. It has an epic kind of feel. I guess that's makes it stand out even more in that hey something new finally. The towns aren't very interesting. Nope, they're all pretty much the same. Yeah, they're all. They've all got an inn, a shop that sells everything. Um, the shop will sell items, weapons, and armor. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you'd have a spell store, uh, a church, and then maybe a few homes. Yep, that's how. That's it, it. That's how it is throughout the entire game. And you'll just occasionally meet different people in different towns. Uh, castles are all set up similarly with yeah. a few shops inside, with knights, a king and a queen, and a problem. You just go from as you the whole thing is just it's incredibly formulaic. Like the designers just cut and paste. You go into a town, find that problem, have to go into the castle to investigate further, go to a dungeon, come back to the castle, they unlock the teleportation shrine, and you go to the next area, rinse and repeat. And you do that many, many times. That's what that's something I noticed playing through it recently was just like, oh fuck. They put like no thought into this at all because it's just I mean, it's got interesting characters. Yeah, uh, main characters. Main characters. Because I mean, outside of the main characters, I mean, are there really? It's the same four any, sprites. Yeah, there. The NPCs are pretty much 
just faces yeah, in the crowd. The old, old man, young woman, <laughs> right? young boy, and that's that's it. So yeah, the actual NPCs are fun, but yeah, it's just it's bare bones. It's got a good story, good characters, but man, it just it feels they put a lot into the puzzles. Yes, and you then could they tell skimped on focus. everything else. Yes. I agree. You could definitely tell the puzzles were their focus. I think the game looks great. I uh-huh. really do. I think this game looks amazing. When I first started playing it, it was like, wow, I'm impressed. I thought this was going to be, I thought this was going to look kind of bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, but everything is bright and shiny. Um, it l- reminded me a lot of Harvest Moon uh, as far as like the way that the characters are designed mm-hmm. and the way that they emote. Um Honestly, I think that any of the NPCs from Harvest Moon could have appeared in this game, and I wouldn't have even, they wouldn't have seemed out of place <laughs> at all. Uh, over the course of the game, because uh, puzzles do vary pretty wildly between using your tools or some, some are like logic puzzles. I remember there were two puzzles during the game. This I had this before, I had the internet. Uh, none of my other for other friends besides Josh played this game. Tyler, the internet has always been around. We just we just didn't uncover it <laughs> until true. the '90s. <laughs> <laughs> but Josh and I both got stuck on the same point. I remember we looked through the instruction guide and we saw this character named Dakar. And we were so excited to get Dakar. He looked awesome. And he's His in the intro. Was awesome because he's he's the super barbarian character. And I, like Josh and I wanted to play him so badly, and we got stuck on the last puzzle before the boss that unlocks your access to his area to recruit him. And we, I bet I was stuck on, we were both stuck on this puzzle for months. Holy we shit. We could not figure this out. Uh, there's, uh, you're going after these demons that have s- split in half mm-hmm. and going through their dungeon. And there, it's a moving a block puzzle. Like there are it, yellow blocks, yellow boxes and red boxes. And you have to move three in a row of that certain color to make them disappear. There's a similar puzzle in one of the earlier dungeons too. Yeah. But there, it's, that, it's, that's, it's sliding boxes and there's like orange, red, and purple. And you have to line them up in three and then they disappear and you have to get rid of all of them before the, the spikes will lower mm-hmm. so you can cross them. So it's like that. It's like that, only eventually like uh, the rules in this one are like, you could only move two orange ones and one red one and stuff like that to make them all disappear. Gotcha. So it, it's adding another layer uh-huh. on there to make it more difficult. So okay. the last one, like Josh and I, just we could not figure it out. I remember like anytime like people would come over to my house, I would show them like mm-hmm. maybe they like uncles, cousins, like I'd have them try it, like show me, see if you can do this. Like no one could do it, and then months later, I just happened to. Figure it out. Wasn't that a weird world that we lived in? <laughs> Wasn't that a weird world where you couldn't just go to a computer and type it in and then the internet told you? Like Alice in Wonderland, Queen of Hearts style, have your instant gratification. <laughs> right. No, it's really weird. That It's weird to think about that when we were kids. You couldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. you could, like Designers were actually able to make things that were challenging because <laughs> there was no internet. You couldn't just... Look up an answer to a puzzle. You had to go to you had to go to a, a Babbage's. Hopefully, Brady Games would have had a strategy guide you could fork down twenty bucks for. You know, that's an interesting. This is completely off topic, but that's an interesting thesis. Almost is the impact of the internet on the video game industry, and I mean that beyond the obvious, like online multiplayer, any of that kind of thing. I just mean it from the stance of a single player experience. Like, how has how has the sheer existence of the internet changed single player video game design? We don't spend design? nearly as much time on games as we would have. So I imagine, like, God, can you imagine playing Dark Souls without like tips yes. and tricks and guides yes. and shit like that? <laughs> yes, so. because that's how I did it, and that's why I never finished <laughs> it twice. <laughs> I refuse to look it up. I'm not gonna. Uh, let's see what else is gonna say about the game. Uh, they something very cool. I enjoy, I always like when you can see your enemies. I despise random encounters. And by that you mean not when... You walk ex- into a explain room. It to me. You walk into a room and the enemies are walking around. You can see them all yes. in the room before it, you enter battle. Yeah, so it's not like in Final Fantasy where you walk into an empty room, take three steps, alarm noise, separate screen battle. Right. Like in Luf- Lufia 2 is... If you do encounter an enemy, you do go to a separate screen. Yes. So it's not like Chrono Trigger where it all takes place exactly as you see it. Right. So, but so there's there is motivation to avoiding enemies, and you have your arrows to stun them and try to walk by them. Mm-hmm. Typically in Lufia, enemies, some enemies can take three steps every one you take, 
or it's a one-for-one -one basis or something like that. They move when you move, essentially. Exactly. So if you walk into, uh, you can walk in and just take your analysis of the room before you take a step if you want to try to get around them. Which is cool, but it does not look cool. Yeah. <laughs> because it makes the enemies look all herky-jerky, and it's like, I'll take a step, and they'll take a step. Yeah. I'll take a step, and they'll take a step. <laughs> so it's like it's not like that organic feeling that mm -hmm. Chrono Trigger had. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, in Chrono Trigger, I, I don't think you could have been as tactical as you can in Lufia 2, mm -hmm. uh, trying to avoid enemies. Because steps, especially in puzzles, the amount of steps you take are vital to yes. solving a lot of puzzles. The second puzzle that Josh and I both got stuck on was oh man, it was a ridiculous puzzle toward toward the, one of the la later dungeons in a volcano. You step into a room and there are nine plants, mm -hmm. and every time you take a step, the plants will grow. Of course, they will. And what yeah. what you have to do is you have to get have the plants all burned down by the time you get to the opposite side of the room. So you take a step, you shoot your flaming arrow straight down, will burn three. So you take one step, like. Three steps and they'll all grow be back. Grown back. So you're having to shoot in lines and co you know columns and rows, uh -huh. trying to figure out how to get them all gone by the time you cross the other side of the room. That sounds difficult. Fuck that. Took, oh, <laughs> that took every bit as long as the other the sliding boxes. Yeah, I mean, oh man, J Josh will still like mention that puzzle and he'll get like an angry look on his face. The sliding boxes or the plants? The plants. I've heard you guys talk about the plants before, yeah. <laughs> and it. I'm glad it's at the end because I don't know what I would do if I got there. I, I probably honestly, I'd probably look it up. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spend a month trying to figure out a puzzle I, I on a Super not. Nintendo game. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a similar puzzle. I'm glad that it, I mean, it seems like they kind of keep the same theme with the puzzles because in the one of the earlier dungeons, I got this helm called the Jet Helm. And in order to mm -hmm. get it, I had to use my bombs to blow up plants uh, before they would regrow mm -hmm. because it's the same kind of scenario. I had to push a block onto a switch. Mm -hmm. That's like the end goal of like pretty much all of the puzzles in this <laughs> game is you got to get a block on a switch. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> or you got to get a jug on a switch <laughs> or you got to stand on a switch or you got to provoke a monster to stand on a switch. Like everything involves switches. <laughs> they should just call this game... Monsters and switches. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write. <laughs> Dear Natsume, monsters Thank and you. switches. Uh, I remember I did get stuck periodically from time to time because I didn't know you could hold down L and R to switch direction without moving, and oh. that that's critical to some puzzles later on. The, I did not know that either. Where you have to pick up a jug <laughs> and then set it, you know, set it back down on a switch. There'll be puzzles like that that also count your steps to start right. growing. I was about to say that would have helped me in my steps. Yep, great. <laughs> Wish I didn't know that. <laughs> Which I'm surprised that I didn't because they do a pretty good job, I feel like, explaining to you what everything does. Your introductory dungeon you oh, have to go Oh, man. Through. I love the introductory dungeon. It's a nice little tutorial uh, that's kind of rare for a game like this, especially mm -hmm. in the time. Um, man, I got to say that I think that the menu system of this game is like one of the most beautiful menu systems I've seen in an RPG. Mm -hmm. um, and it's especially at this time, like you could go over and even, even though the spell names aren't intuitive, if you hit Y, you get a little pop-up box that tells you exactly what it does. And you can do that on all your weapons. You can do that on your skills. You can do that on all the items. It's amazing. It's one of those things where it's like, wow, this felt ahead of its time. The menu system and the, and the UI felt leaps and bounds ahead of any RPG of the time mm -hmm. because it was you don't know what this does? Well, hit this button and we'll tell you what it does. As well as like Final Fantasy 2 when you get all these weird arrows and shit like right. that. You like, have no oh. idea. Just try it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I remember about Final Fantasy. The uh, Really, the Final Fantasy series is just, well, I don't know what this does. I guess I'll try it. And then opening a chest is very satisfying in Luffy because he, they did the Zelda thing where Maxim will turn around and hold, hold the it up item, over his head. swirls yeah. go around you and he holds <laughs> it play, up. They'll play fanfare. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. There, there are two, um, two other uh, qualities about this game that I think are amazing. Uh, one being the the ancient dungeon or the ancient cave. It is you go in. Uh, the guy talks about it almost like it's a game. Adventurers come here from all around to try and conquer conquer the dungeon. Uh -huh. That it's a hundred floors. Okay. You start off at level one. No equipment. No items. Nothing. Is this like a different mode or something? Or it's just it's an optional dungeon in the game you can go through. Where do you where do you access it? Uh, once you get your 
access to a boat, you can settle the island. Okay. Do they tell you that it's there, or do you just find it? Uh, In one of the cities, they tell you, blah, blah, home of the ancient cave is southwest of here, and then the thing you're supposed to do is northeast of here. So don't you definitely don't go there first. Yeah. I mean, that's (laughs) video game logic. They tell you to go somewhere, you go there last. Yep. (laughs) So you can go there. You also, the... um, Lufia has basically a new game plus mode where after you beat it, then you can just do the ancient cave if you want. That's cool. Uh, so basically you go in level one, no equipment, no items. Uh, the monsters start off weak and every floor they get progressively stronger. Do you find weapons and items? You find okay. new. So you're finding like good equipment and shitty equipment and things like that. You're just making it work. Make, yeah, you're uh-huh. trying to make it work. This sounds like a cool mode. And you can... You will find occasionally it's rare blue treasure chests and will give you unique items that you keep and can use in the game. And they're also marked. So if you go back to the ancient cave, you start with those items. Oh, that's cool. So if you get to floor 87 before you die and you find six blue treasure chests, uh-huh. you can go back in level one and with keep... all that equipment. Okay, yeah. that's cool. And then there's the exceptionally rare equipment. When you go out, there'll be like a trophy system where you can find iris equipment and there are like 16 pieces of iris equipment is it like a set or something yeah you can't equip it it's just a item you get and it appears in the trophy room and then there are i hate that shit there are four locked chests and Uh if you complete the entire set the owner will unlock the door and you can have the four best items in the game essentially now are those actually functional or those Those are actually functional items i hate trophy items i really do i mean especially in a game that doesn't have any internet connection. You know what I mean? Like you can't brag. Yeah. yeah, It's like, you gotta like, Hey guys, uh, come over to my house. I'm going to turn this game on. I'm going to let you look at all my imaginary trophies. (laughs) See see this, see this Iris helmet and these Iris greaves. Mm. Found those. Yeah. It's very nice. Very nice. (laughs) But if you play through the ancient cave in regular mode, you just have to do whatever party you have in new game. Plus ancient cave. You pick from all the characters you have throughout the game. Cool. You can tailor make your party to however you want to try to tackle the dungeon. So I imagine that you like this, that you like the 100 I played, level challenge. I never finished it. That's what was going to be my next question. Yeah. How far did you get? Do you know? I think I got halfway done. Wow. Because I would go through, I don't think I ever made it to the 100th floor. What happens when you die? You get kicked out. You have to start all over again. Okay. And like, I think there is, there's a boss every, every 10 floors. Okay. And like the one, the 100th level boss being like, ruby weapon kind of like super difficult and you're more already difficult than the actual story final to, boss? to my knowledge yeah it's okay. more difficult than the sinistrals but but they're and, gods the little demigods <laughs> the, the wikipedia said they're gods, they're gods wikipedia's wrong. <laughs> but they uh and you're also kind of you have to go through it so many times to get the special equipment that's the best that you retain in order to beat this boss i see you get pretty shitty equipment except for the stuff you get as you progress through. In the blue chests and in the lock chests. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. And it's also very, another, something you have to do to kind of succeed in the dungeon is the other cool thing I like about Lufia 2 is the the pet monsters, the pet capsules. Yeah, the capsule monsters, which is the Pokemon ripoff. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because you get, you will find, they're each based on an element. Mm-hmm. You find this pet that you don't control it. It has a random move set. You don't even get to see like its health or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Like, because I only found one, mm-hmm. Fumi, mm-hmm. and who honestly is probably the best one. But that's I was also going to ask you that because yeah. I was going to ask: Is this one of these games where it's like you're better off just using the first one you get? Because he is his element is neutral, and all his attacks are 100 percent physical. So not many people have resistance to him. All his attacks are reliably strong. So he doesn't have big. He, I've never seen him run away. He's the most loyal pet capsule you can get. A lot of them, if they reach half hit points, they'll run from battle. Gotcha. Uh, the one who is the dark elemental, if he gets hit once, pretty much he runs from battle. So <laughs> he sounds awesome. <laughs> F- so Fumi all the way. Fumi, and I guess it's a mistranslation. It probably should be foamy because he's just bubbles. I it's like a pile Fu- of bubbles. I like Fumi. So as and you feed them, uh, they have a health meter uh, basically, and they'll ask for a certain kind of. Weapon or armor. And once you feed it to them, and then their health goes up. And once it reaches that max bar, they evolve into their next form. 
I like that. I like that a lot. That's one of the things I love the most about the capsule monster system is how they level up because we talked about this or I've talked about this on the show before. I always hold on to things in mm-hmm. RPGs. Like I have a really hard time even like selling old equipment that's like levels and levels <laughs> beyond me because I'm always like, I want to hold on to it because it's like, this might have a use later on. Like I don't want to get to the last boss and he tell me, Oh, uh, if only you had kept that leather helm. Because <laughs> then Here's I could that just, iron I just, kukri. Right. I just put it on real quick and be like, ah, I got gotcha. you. But see, this game is great for people like me because it's like, hey, those items have a use now. Mm-hmm. They have a use. Feed it to Fumi and Fumi will get stronger. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's good. I it's, love it's it. A really I really, good thing I really, to do. I love it. I think that's a great system. But a lot of the evolutions don't make a ton of sense. I have them all written out. Some some are good, and some are just like fucking crazy. <laughs> okay, because of course Fumi goes small small pile of foam, small Fumi, medium pile medium of foam, Fumi. large pile of foam uh-huh. that looks vaguely humanoid. Yes, and then each one their final evolution, you have to feed them um, a special egg, and then they'll reach their highest evolution, like an Easter egg. It's just it's some something egg. <laughs> okay. Like I think. Fumi, you have to feed him like the charm egg, sriracha egg. <laughs> And then he turns into the nine-tailed fox for no real reason. Well, they're really good at disguising themselves, <laughs> as you know, Tyler. So, well, see, he looks kind of strange because it lo- he looks like a pile of tails and then a claw. <laughs> <laughs> but he he was incredibly strong. Uh, the fire one starts off as a dog. I didn't find I didn't find any of them, but Fumi. No, you don't get another one for a long time. Okay. Like you find him first off, and you don't. It's several dungeons before you find another one. But the fire one goes dog. Lion, lizard, dragon, firebird. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let's see. The uh, light one is a bush. Okay, starts out as a bush. A bush. Uh, How does that work, by a, the way? It's a, it's a bush holding a spear. Oh, okay. And then well, he, that now it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and then he turned then um, like a fairy. Okay. And then a cupid, a cherub. I can see that progression. That That works. Then an angel. Okay, so far we're doing great. Then a unicorn. Okay, we lost me on the, lost me there. <laughs> maybe maybe the cherubs all get together and build a unicorn out of like little bits of dead angels, <laughs> we- weapons and dead angels. <laughs> but he is important to the ancient cave. The unicorn. The well, just the light pet capsule in general, because okay. that's the only one that will heal you. Generally, gotcha. it's easy to find healing items in the normal game, but in the ancient cave, they're in incredibly hard to find ah, so you I pretty see. much have to have that pet capsule the ancient cave is in. the hundred level dungeon uh-huh. okay let's see and then there's the wind one uh, he starts off as a bug then goes into a bird nope that doesn't work uh then a winged horse <sighs> come on come on guys <laughs> then a titan what i and then a dragon but you get a dragon you said dragon earlier uh-huh. from one of the other ones yep why don't you just keep that dragon mm-hmm. this is blue <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this one's blue. Okay. Uh, the dark one, uh-huh. he starts out, he's also a shrub. This is the one that just runs away. He just runs away for no reason. Okay, yeah, great. It's once he's out of there. Uh, he's a shrub, and then he's a wolf man. Okay. Maybe the maybe the wolf man was hiding in the in shrub. In the shrub. Yeah. And then he turns into a small imp. Okay, man, you guys. Then he turns into a big imp. Uh, okay. All right, that one makes sense. And then he turns into a dragon. Fuck. <laughs> These guys, they don't. I don't think they understand evolution. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I really, I don't think that they understand. Let's Special, go. Well, the earth, the earth one. There's Start, more. He starts off as a radish. Okay. Then he turns into a red cap. The uh, goblin. The yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, turns into a giant. Uh huh. Then an Easter Island stonehead. Oh no! You can't do that. Mm-hmm. That's a bad idea. Then a centaur. <laughs> <laughs> Man, come on, guys. Uh, the last one is the water one, which I find to be the most ridiculous. If his final form isn't Kevin Costner, then I'm I'm done. <laughs> it's better. It's better. Oh, than, his it's final form better, is better than, than Kevin, Kevin Costner, Costner. Tyler. I uh, starts up as a fish. Okay. Turns into a frog. Well, plenty of those outside Tadpog <laughs> Annex. Turns into a merman. Okay. Turns into mm-hmm. a titan. Another titan. Mm-hmm. And then turns into the reverse merman. Or, or a, well, he has a the fish, man, a fish head, mer? fish head with legs, in, oh, as okay. opposed to the fish body with man torso. Okay. So he goes from huge titan to very small frog head with legs. Oh, he's small. His final form, yes. Gotcha. Oh boy, what are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? It's ridiculous. <laughs> and also, this game—I don't know if you heard about this—it's notorious for having a horrible, 
horrible glitch they just left in the game. No, I did not hear about this. Like, it is, what is a... It? Re- I thought my copy of the game was fucked up. Is it game-breaking? It's not game-breaking. Okay. It's just like, why did they not fix this? What is it? Uh, the final... The, the game... Basically, Maxim has to find the dual blade to become strong enough to fight the Sinistrals. Well, that's the other thing. In the, in the intro, it, it's apparent that they are... This planet is ruled by a sword... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whoever has the dual blade can basically kill everybody else. Okay. Um, so you have to go to the shrine where the dual blade is kept. Okay. The shrine is just glitched out to all hell. You like, st- how do you mean? You step in. Like, if you read the plaque, like, it's supposed to be called, like, the sunken submarine is what it's called. But when you go and check the plaque for the dungeon name, it's Wingdings. <laughs> and then when you step in, it's all sorts of fucked up. Like, you can't... the The... Sprites are everywhere, patches of darkness, just and it's just completely oh. bugged out and fucked up. And how do you get through it? Luck. I just remember oh, walking man, around. That is so disappointing. You can occasionally see Maxim whenever you're running around, like really through little holes and stuff. And then I just after like an hour of just step press A, step press A, step oh, trying man. to get that through is, it. I was. And they left this in the oh, game. Oh man, I was considering finishing this game. I don't know that, that I will part, now. That part is awful but then occasionally you just finally walk up and then like oh. you talk to the head sinistral and then you see max up then you can actually see him turn around and raise up the dual blade and then you can cast warp and get out and you're sure it's not like a I, story thing right like it's supposed I, to be all messed up I where he is the japanese version is fine oh man <laughs> what are they doing to yeah, us yeah First of all, we got a capsule monster just evolving willy nilly, and now we got to go through all kinds of glitch garbage <laughs> to get the dual blade. Insanity. We haven't talked much about the story. Is that okay? There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of one. There's not. It's just Maxim meeting people, trying to get the dual blade to go fight the Sinistrals. It feels like all the story is kind of laid out in the beginning. Yeah. Um, and then from there, it feels like a lot of character development, mm-hmm. which I like. I mean, it's not really, what I saw wasn't really deep character development, but I was able to get an idea that, for example, Tia loves Maxim and mm-hmm. wants to have his baby. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like that was a good, that was good character development for an RPG on the Super <laughs> yeah. Nintendo that involves um, solving puzzles yeah. <laughs> and feeding monsters <laughs> weapons until they turn into dragons. But then from that, I mean, if playing usually the first one, then you know. Then you feel bad because it's like Tia loves Maxim, but you know that they don't end up together. So then it's kind of doomed from the start. It's it gives you a certain reaction playing through it because maybe you maybe you want to be wrong. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of sad now. Yeah. Honestly. I'm kind of bummed out. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm gonna cheer myself up by imagining that Maxim is Chrono with his hair slicked back. <laughs> <laughs> you're not you're, you're not totally crazy because that's what he reminded me of is chrono as a greaser uh, i st- i still have no idea uh who a is from the beginning intro you see the sinistral Irum talking to apparently their leader a yeah who you never see again oh really who is never mentioned again you go through and you fight the four sinistrals they act like deos is in charge and that's just it no clue no clue who this guy is uh always been unexplained i need to play through the other, I think there's also a fourth one. I want to say, like I read that somewhere. Like I need to play through them to learn the story. But to my knowledge, no idea who he is. What did you think of the IP mechanic? Like uh, where all weapons and equipment have a special ability that you use. It can be good. I mean, it's not. It doesn't come into use all that often unless you're in a pinch. It's more helpful in the ancient cave if you get a helmet that can heal yourself with IP. I I used it. That's the only way I could beat the giant catfish who's causing earthquakes. I have a feeling that I was going through the game like I was trying to rush through the game. I wasn't like grinding (laughs) for levels or anything like that. So it's like I was heavily relying on these IP abilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought the mechanic was pretty cool because it's like it's essentially what they did in Final Fantasy VII with limit breaks because there's this bar that fills up as you get hit. And it's called an IP bar. And once it gets full, or I mean, it doesn't even have to be full. As it fills up, you can use abilities that are essentially assigned to your items. Mm-hmm. Like for example, if I'm wearing a, if I'm wearing a sweet ass frock, um, <laughs> what I can do is when I have a certain amount of IP filled up, I can heal myself. I can use that IP that's built up to heal myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought that was kind of cool it because is, yeah. it gives you abilities. It gives you extra customization of the characters. I liked it a lot. Now, I, I would love for you to finish this game. 
Um, I would love to finish it too. <laughs> if if you had time and enjoyed not, it, but. I, I mean, I did enjoy it, mm-hmm. and I would love if I weren't doing the show. And this is, goes back to when Blake asked me about how if it's changed how I feel about video games. It has. Yeah. The doing the show has changed it drastically because if we weren't doing the show, we didn't have to do another game next week. Two games next week, yeah. <laughs> I would totally play the rest of this game. Mm. Because it's good, and then I'd like to do the you know the original Luffy eventually for another ship Monday because it's it's not on the list. I feel does like it belong in the list? I think it belongs in the eighties, but I think really? it belongs on the list. Obviously, you think Luffy two belongs on this list. Yes. Do you think it's placed correctly? I think it's placed probably just right because it it has some interesting mechanics, but also like the towns and the castles and the story layout is atrocious. So it deserves to be knocked down for that. It's got plenty of good. A uh, decent amount of bad, so I think 30s is probably pretty solid for it. Yeah, I agree, man. I think that this game was actually, it surprised me. I didn't think that I was going to like it as much as I did, mm-hmm. um, but I did. I liked it. I thought it was genuinely a pretty entertaining game. I, I, I normally don't like formulaic games, but the puzzles were really, they're done well. They're designed well, mm-hmm. and I really enjoyed thinking through them, and I really enjoyed the combat system. I thought the combat system was really cool. It flowed. It didn't feel old and stale to me mm-hmm. at any time. I think that IP helped with that, too. It kept it interesting. Um, I definitely think it was better than Illusion of Gaia. Like, mm-hmm. definitely think it was. And I think based on the other RPGs that we have coming up, I don't think it's as good as those. I think the next one we're doing is like Final Fantasy two, right? Yeah, it's way like... 13 is the next RPG, I think. Yeah. Definitely not better than the top tier RPGs, but yeah. still, this was solid. Mm-hmm. I was, I, mean, I wish I'd have played it earlier. I, I really do. Glad, glad to hear that. Touch, touches me. Touches me from my childhood. I could tell. I jo- could tell Josh, from, Josh and I would be very happy. I could tell from your tone. I'm happy for Josh. <laughs> if only you were here. <laughs> uh, do, you have, do you think of any achievements? Um, I've got two achievements. You usually go first. Do you want to break tradition or let's break tradition? All right, we'll break tradition. First one I've got is good old fashioned fish fry. And in order in order to <laughs> unlock good old fashioned fish fry, what you have to do is defeat the giant catfish who's living in a lake under the mountain and causing earthquakes. You have to kill him with the spell spark. <laughs> nice, nice. And I've also got eat my shorts. And in order to unlock eat my shorts. You have to outsmart Bertie and Bart to reclaim <laughs> the king's crown. They do reoccur throughout the whole game. I figured, are they also in regular old Lufia? I uh, not only so. Okay. The reason I ask is because it's very apparent that they're going to show up again. Because like after you outsmart them, um, one of the characters makes reference. I'm sure that's not the last we're going to see of them. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so they're going to show up probably in, in Lufia one. But it, I think, I think it, Lufia one is it doesn't make I think like um, Maximus Land's son was held in like stasis or something for a while because it's like seventy years later after the events of Lufia after the events of Lufia two uh-huh. so they're not a lot of humans are still alive so those, from the same time those period. crown thieves are dead yep they are totally just, dead they are lying in a shallow <laughs> cold grave <laughs> then I have I've got three achievements okay what you got I've got Iris's avatar. Which that's we get all the iris gear in the ancient cave. Uh, Jinchuriki. What? Jinchuriki. Which that is you get the nine tailed fox. Ah. Naruto is the Jinchuriki oh, okay. of the I, nine tails in Naruto. I thought you were making some like gentrification <laughs> joke. I was like, I don't know where he's going with this. It kind of sounds Japanese. So like, is there a town that maybe you <laughs> you fix up real nice for the <laughs> gentrification? For, right. I, mean, I don't know. We put a we put a nice mall in it. <laughs> uh, and then Ash Ketchum, which is that's when you get all the pet capsules and evolve them to max. Nice. Nah, well, how long would that take? How many items would that take? A lot. <laughs> it, t- it would take it take a very long time. I I almost did it on my main playthrough of the wow. game. Wow. I think I only missed. I couldn't find the eggs for like two of them. So I we're running we're we're, we're running short on time. I I do have a quiz. Let's let's do it, man. It's a it. fucking quiz. Yeah, yeah let's okay. do it. Because I I feel like I really enjoyed. I had a connection to Maxim because Maxim has red hair. The Maxim magazine. <laughs> uh, Maxim had red hair. I had red hair when I played through this game. Uh-huh. Like I feel the affinity for Maxim. I like how you said I had red hair when I played through this game. Uh, yeah, well, my hair is <laughs> what is there is much. My I have a red beard now, oh. but my hair, what is left, is much darker than it was. My hair growing up is the same color as my beard is now. 
I see. I didn't know you growing up. So this is all news yeah. to me. Yeah. I'm, I'm pleasantly <laughs> surprised that your hair and beard matched. So this quiz <laughs> is redheads in video games. You did have a beard as a as a child, uh, I right? Came out having a right. beard. <laughs> Um, redheads in video games. Redheads in video games. So I'll just have a brief description of whoever this character is, and then mm. see if you can. Man, I was expecting Josh to be here. Oh so no! It might so be it's a little. Some of it's, it's a little <laughs> difficult. It's incredibly difficult. You know, being half of the hosting for Tadpog, you'd think that I'd be pretty good at this, but I'm about to be thoroughly embarrassed. <laughs> I, I, at some point in time, I believe you have played all of these. Okay. So just your memory just might be sketchy on some of it. Just remember, <laughs> video game. They're all video game characters. Okay. And they're all redheads. Oh great. The Echidna Bruiser. Um, that is Knuckles. Correct. Has a crush on Tifa Lockhart. A redhead? Mm-hmm. Reno? Reno is correct. <laughs> wow. Man, you took me back. I had to like really I had to like my I had to like physically I could physically imagine the figures going through that file cabinet. Okay, fine, Final Fantasy Seven, got it. All right, let's go through all the main characters. Da, 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 red hair. No, 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 no. Oh, oh there we go. That one awkward the scene where the turks are talking about they have crushes on. Golly. Reno also, um, one of my favorite NPCs mm-hmm. in RPGs ever. I remember you saying that, oh. so I specifically sought him sought out that one I love for Reno. you. Um, a male or female warden's romance. So a character right. you were called. You were a warden. I know. Okay. I know what game that is. Okay. That's um. That's dragon. Um. Shit. Um. Uh, what's the name of the series? Dragon. Dragon Age. Age. Um. Who was the redhead in that? Oh man. I think you did what I did and let her die. <laughs> I was about to say. I'm pretty sure she died. So I was expecting Josh to jump up on this one. Uh, so. I can't remember her name, but you're going to say it, and I'm going to hate myself, because she is also the one that you could have lesbian scenes with. Is uh-huh. that correct? So male or female, yeah, whatever she was you bisexual. are, you could have her. I can't remember her name, though. She um, also makes an appearance in Dragon Age 2. And she is... She's not full human, is she? Or is she? Uh, no, I believe she is. I, think. Uh, I can't remember her name. Liliana. Liliana. Okay. I think you were thinking of Morrigan. Yeah, I was. Which originally Morgan. I thought Morrigan, but whenever I looked at pictures, I didn't think her hair was quite red enough. So okay. The Saiyan animated Jesus. No. 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 The the Saiyan animated Jesus. Chrono. Chrono. God, that was <laughs> such a shitty way to word that question, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> the male Gerudo. The male Gerudo. Mm, sorry. Everyone's screaming at me on their iPads and iPods. Ganondorf. Ah. Yeah. Zelda's not my jam. Yeah. Josh There's would have been all Josh. over that. <laughs> Josh would have been all over that. Time rewinding stalker. Um Stalker. Only thing I can think of is Dark Stalkers. Um Time Rewinding. Makes you think of Chrono Trigger again, but we already did, we already I mean Marley's kinda redheaded. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm sorry. Tim from Braid. Oh, Tim. <laughs> the electrical capoeira Brazilian. Eddie Gordo? <laughs> <laughs> you got capoeira. <laughs> I don't know. Blanca. Blanca. Yeah, he does have red hair, doesn't he? <laughs> uh, I don't know because I never play as him because he is fucking awful. I've told this story before, I think. No. Um, Blanca was always a character in Street Fighter 2. I'd go over to a friend's house. And I always, I wanted to be good as Blanca. Like, that was my <laughs> life ambition. And I couldn't because he's fucking awful. <laughs> you just press Y and just do the electric That's what shock I would in the do. corner. And I would just expect my friend to be dumb enough to, like, come on, man, kick me. <laughs> no, what would he do? He'd just wait until my thumb got tired and then he'd beat the shit out of me. <laughs> Eggman. <laughs> uh, Eggman. Is this a, hmm, I need a hint. This is basically what he was called in the Japanese version, Eggman. He's, he has he's red hair? He's called something different in the American version is at, this, at first. Is this a, um, hmm, he's called, Egg, oh, uh, Dr. Wiley. Uh, not Dr. Wiley, uh, shit, <laughs> his mean bean machine. Yeah, his exactly. Dr. Robotnik. There you go. God bless. <laughs> the Besaid Oruk. The Besaid Auric. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Waka from Final Fantasy X. Ah, that's a great game that <laughs> I haven't played since it came out. Yeah, I haven't played it either. All right, okay. 
And then this one, this this is a, a difficult one. The Vault Hunting Siren. God, if that was a difficult one. The Vault Hunting Siren. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's got to be a Fallout thing, right? Or it could be Borderlands. Uh, I feel pretty proud of myself that I've narrowed it down to those two That's games. True. So I, I don't it. know. That's pretty awful. I don't know who it is. I'm sorry. Lilith from Borderlands. Okay. See, I thought you might have been the companion in New Vegas, the redhead. Veronica. Veronica, who's she's voiced by um is she voiced by Felicia Day? Yes. That's what I thought. And that's like a two head redhead combo. <laughs> blah, blah. That's okay. Bo- bonus points. <laughs> so that's bonus why points. I went there immediately. No, you don't please don't, don't give me pity points. You don't give me pity points. <laughs> that cancels out one of the Josh directed questions. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be one of the episodes of so the I mean, I feel like that was a hard that was a hard quiz. So you did pretty good on that. I feel like that was hard too. I also feel like I missed some pretty some pretty <laughs> obvious ones too. You got Reno. That was good. Mm. But still, it's a quiz, and I love it. And in counterpoint, I would like to give you a quiz. Okay. And a new regular segment that I like to call, How Much Is This Game on Amazon? Mm. So, Tyler, uh-huh, uh-huh. as of this recording today, what I would like you to do is guess how much this game is on Amazon. I bought this game on Amazon two years ago for $28. Okay. I'm going to say... Are you going to adjust for inflation? I, I'm sure it's gone up. Okay. So I will say $45. Tyler, actual retail value of Lufia 2, Rise of the Sinistrals, on Amazon, today, used $71.26. Time to wrap up what you bought yeah. and put it on Amazon, <laughs> my friend. Go. I can make a tidy profit on that one. Do you want to guess, bonus points... How much this game is on Amazon? New. $800. Off by $10. <laughs> Shit. Off by $10. <laughs> Actual retail value of Lufia 2, new, $790. Oh, fuck. Mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> Um, you can pay your mortgage with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> At least for, for a few months. Yeah, <laughs> for a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I could with my $790 <laughs> house. <laughs> Anything else to add about Luffy 2? I'd recommend it. Honestly, I'd recommend it. I would, even if you're on the fence on RPGs. I honestly, I think this is a good entry point. Mm-hmm. If That's you're true. not looking for, if you're not looking for an involved story, do it. Do it, and at least crawl some dungeons. I mean, that's it's fun. And if you're into puzzles, if you're into you know thinking logically and and all that, definitely check it out because there's a lot of that. After after we get done recording, I would like for you and I to play through the intro to Lufia 1. Okay. All right. I think that'd be fun. We'll do it. I won't get the full effect because I didn't finish <laughs> Lufia 2, but you can sit <laughs> there and be really it. excited. Yeah, I'll be I'm like, like oh, 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 I recognize those that one character. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. You can find the... Oh, shit. We shouldn't do that yet. I know. There's a very important question I haven't <laughs> asked you yet. <laughs> we almost broke. Almost. Ooh. Tyler. Mm-hmm. I've had a lot of fun today. I know we're running long. I know we want to wrap it up. We are good. <laughs> but I've got a, a very important question. Mm-hmm. We don't like numbers at all. Mm-hmm. We prefer letters, but more than letters, we prefer things that go on the face. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that goes on the face is a beard that you have had from the day you were born. Mm-hmm. If you were to give this game a beard that shows the world what you feel about this game, what kind of beard would it be? So you set that up appropriately because I'm giving this game my beard. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Like 12-year-old Tyler beard? Yeah, we get a 12-year-old <laughs> red, red-bearded red Tyler <laughs> sitting in my bean bag in my parents' house playing this game. Now, you're just going to give your beard up like that? Just like that? You're not going to save it for... Final Fantasy 2 or See, Final my, Fantasy 3? My, my beard's not, like, like epic. I think I have a good beard, but I don't have, like, an amazing, like, epic beard. But that's a personal beard, man. Okay, I'll give it my You got, okay. This game meant a lot to me growing growing up, okay. so I'll give it my beard. I just want to make sure you're mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. I, I, don't, sure. I don't want you to give up your beard virginity willy-nilly. <laughs> It needs Pop my to be, beard cherry on Luffy too. It needs to be special. That can be like the <laughs> nastiest mental image. It involved you like eating a messily eating a cherry pot, like a Hormel, just you're cramming it. <laughs> Got a big bowl of maraschino cherries. I'm just mashing it into my face. I don't know about all this. I'm kind of afraid to ask you, Tyler, but mm-hmm. if you were to give this game a pair of glasses mm-hmm. that you put on each morning and went out into the world. Um, and, and everyone who saw you was like, oh, that's how he feels about Lufia too. What kind of glasses would you give it? 
our good friend Josh's glasses. Picture photo not available. Yeah. He missed picture day. <laughs> <laughs> Josh's glasses, I think, are just spectacles. He doesn't have there's no frame or anything on them. Just just glasses. Just they're functional. They're Josh glasses. Just like Luffy too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, thanks for listening, everybody. You can find the show on iTunes or Stitcher. So don't miss the next episode. We'll be talking about something on Monday. Yeah, we need to figure that out. Yeah. I guess we should have mentioned that this is our 100th episode. Uh, let me let me pull the switch. All the confetti will come out. <laughs> so it's our 100th episode. Mm-hmm. 30, We're going to take the day off. Originally, we thought when we got to our 100th episode, we'd uh-huh. be at our number one ranked game. <laughs> We're at 34. <laughs> right? Oh, that's depressing. <laughs> oh, that, that, that actually does make me sad. <laughs> <laughs> now it's not special. 100's not special. Uh, I guess it is special because we did Lufia 2. That's super important to your mm-hmm. gaming development. So, all right, I'm fine again. So, so crisis averted. We'll we'll do we'll do something anniversary special sometime sometime soon. We'll okay. celebrate our anniversary somehow somehow. All right, we'll record this, naked. this milestone. And then next Wednesday we'll be talking about I believe Metal Warrior. I believe that is right. So that'd be next original every we, Wednesday. We both really don't know. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Never heard of that game. We'll so. see you then. <laughs> uh, while you're there, don't forget to subscribe. Give the show a five-star rating. Write a review. If there's a game you'd like us to talk about, include it in your review, and we'll get to it eventually. eventually. Guys, I want to give a shout-out to Paul Cluel, who's been doing gameplay videos for us. Mm-hmm. If... Um, you didn't have the fortune of playing, if you were like me and didn't have the fortune of playing Lufia 2 when you were a child, uh, he actually has a gameplay video up that'll give you an idea of what this game is like. If even after listening to us talk about it, you're on the fence, I say check out his video. Um, we'll have a link to it on our Facebook page mm-hmm. at facebook.com slash tadpog. Um, you can also just go to YouTube and type in what's Paul playing today. And I think when I did that earlier, it was like the first one that popped up. Look, I don't know. Look through all his videos. Maybe maybe there's you don't like Lufia too? That's fine. He, check, check out something else. Check out something else. Why not? Uh, I meant to mention that earlier, but we kind of got really into the game really fast. Mm-hmm. Um, we're also on Twitter, Tyler. We're also on Twitter. We're mm-hmm. at Tadpog underscore podcast. There's a lot of wonderful people who are spreading the Tadpog uh, word. So thank you very much for doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you said, we will be back next week mm-hmm. um, with more gaming goodness. In the meantime, if you can't wait for more Tadpog, you can always find us at Tadpog.com. Uh, that's where the show notes live. I don't know what the show notes are going to look like for this episode because we really stayed on point. So I hope I hope the I hope you really like the in depth game talk because there wasn't a whole lot of goofs this episode. But um, I feel like we maintained the energy. I feel like you yeah. were bringing it. You were passionate. It was it. great. I could links to all the the games that are on the, the quiz. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right. Well, there's how many questions was that? Ten. Ten. There you go. Great. And then you can put a big you can put a big F or D minus next to my name for the score that I got. Our intro song, Tyler, mm. is Moves. Moves. By Sycamore Drive. A link to that track can be found in the show notes at tadpog.com. Mm. I'd give our phone number. I would I see the look on your face. You do you want me to give the phone number? You can give it or I can give it. I, you give it. I always give it. 270-883-2555. And then call that number for just hanging out time, or mm-hmm. you want to? Can you? Or if they want to call with something under three minutes, maybe a question. That would be cool. That would, that would be appreciated. If someone calls and leaves a pizza order, will you make a pizza and mail it to them? I'll make a pizza and they can come and get it. They can come get it. Yeah. So you're carry out only. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, forget it. Forget Cat, it. Cash only ca- carry out. <laughs> I guess I should also want to give a quick shout out to uh, I haven't mentioned in a while Jess Dockery of Silk Street Post. Yeah, this is her absolute favorite game of all time. So we don't have her, we don't have Josh. Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> I don't know. People who love have this we, game is not showing up. Have we pissed everybody off? I think so. I think so. Well, sorry guys. I know we haven't done like thanks or shout outs in a while. <laughs> See, this is what happens. This is what happens when we don't. Friends start when we don't up. thank mm. people. Until next time, Tropical, Tropical Capricorn. Capricorn.
that your iPad? Or is that you? That's impressive. It's impressively <laughs> long. That's stinger long. <laughs>